some dignitaries uh, with us today. I, I consider this to be such an important uh, message that I'm bringing. Uh, but I, I'd like my, my, my friend, uh, Ambassador Sikilumi Natswale, uh, he, him and his wife Bantley, he is the Ambassador of Lesotho. If you could stand, please. Many of you might realize he's here every week. He's a very humble man. He worships with us, and we just want to acknowledge you. Thank you for coming, sir. Bless you, sir. And so today we have a very, uh, an, another very important guest with us, and it is uh, the, the ambassador of Israel, uh, Am Ambassador Laran Bar Sadeh. And I'm probably not pronouncing your name right, but I would like you to give her a big All Nations welcome as she comes forward to address us today. Could you please stand to your feet as she comes forward? Amen. Thank you so much. I'm really honored and uh, very excited to be here with you. This is my first time here. Uh, I'm sure it's not the last time. Uh, and I'm very happy to have my friend, the ambassador of Lesotho here. And um, um, I'm happy to see so many of you here. So I have a speech prepared and uh, I, I hope I won't bore you too much uh, with what I prepared. Uh, so good day, ladies and gentlemen. And as we simply say in Israel, 
שלום פרנדס, שלום חברים, שלום to you all. Uh, it's really very moving for me to be here with you today. Um, it is indeed a pleasure to be here today at the All Nations Church and at this gathering. And I would like to begin by thanking Pastor John Ahern and Pastor Joanna Ahern for the inv invitation to speak with uh, you today here. Uh, I am quite amazed to realize that I have been in Ireland already nine months. And though sometimes I feel like a baby who knows nothing, I did manage to learn a bit about the Irish people. And I can say, I can concur that people here, uh, people were not lying to me when they said that you can experience four seasons in Ireland in one day. Uh, but they all smell of spring. Much has also been said about the warmth of the Irish people, and I've certainly found that to be true, even though I don't drink. <laughs> I appreciate the warm welcome that has been extended to me and to my husband, Offer, by many Christian churches, as well as the Irish brands of the International Christian Embassy um, and the Irish Christian Friends of, uh, of Israel. I want to extend a big thank you to you here today at the All Nations Church for your friendship and stance supporting Israel and its people. Your thoughts and your prayers follow us and encourage us. This is always true. People, wherever they are, and however strong, confident, and independent they are, need to thrive on encouragement and friendship. In times of need, we first and foremost need a hand extended to us. And this is what you all do by praying and thinking of us, so thank you. It is even more so when one lives in a place that is often very critical of Israel, and thus gives us very limited space for an environment that promotes engagement activities between people or organizations and such. The State of Israel only last Thursday marked its 74th year of independence, independence that we unfortunately cannot take for granted despite the fact that 74 years have passed since our renewed independence in this land of Israel. Independence that so many nations simply take for granted, that they do not have to pause and reflect upon. They simply were born into a reality that is very reassuring and safe. Unfortunately, there isn't a manual. Nobody has written a book uh, on how to create states. Uh, we have manifestos, but they usually are written by people who have little to do with the nitty gritty. Um, of, of, of establishing a state. Uh, many people uh, just live in a state and do not think about it, but in Israel we have to consider it daily and to fight for our security daily. Um, this week also, not only did we uh, um, celebrate the Day of Independence, but preceding that we celebrated two very somber days. Yom HaShoah, the day of the commemoration of the Holocaust, and Yom HaZikaron, the day of remembrance of the fallen soldiers and the victims of terrorism. These days remind us that joy is intertwined with sadness. Happiness is forever shadowed by some darkness. Like the life of a person, the cycle of a nation is forever an ongoing mix of forces that pull in different directions. One day you're at war, the next tourists are flying between Tel Aviv, Cairo, Amman, Casablanca, and Bahrain. And that only adds color to an already vibrant society, a tapestry that is Israel, comprised of many ethnic groups and religions. Religion in Israel is a central feature and plays a major role in shaping our culture and lifestyle. And religion has played a central role in Israel's history. Israel is also the only country in the world where a majority of its citizens are Jewish. 
But when you put that aside for a moment, we also have 21% of Arabs and more than 4% from other minority groups. The, religion, the religious affiliation of the Israeli population is around 75% Jewish and 17% Muslim, more or less, and 2.1% Christian, and 1.7% Druze, more or less, and even a small Baha'i community living mostly in the north of Israel. The remaining 4% see themselves as not classified by religion. According to Israel's Central Bureau of Statistics, there are tw from 2021, there are about 182,000 Christians living in Israel. That's a mere 1.9% of the total population. The growth compared to the previous year is 1.4%. 77% of them almost are Arabs, and most of them live in the northern regions. Among the non-Arab Christians, 41% live in Tel Aviv area. In 2020, 2,497 children were born in the Christian families, while the number of children up to the age of 17 in each family averaged almost 2%, a lower figure than in the Jewish and Muslim families. The past year, 53.1% of Arab Christians and 35.4% of non-Arab Christians completed college studies with eight years of graduating from high school, within eight years of graduating from high school. That's considerably higher than the Jewish or Muslim performance. The performance of women among Christian students is also higher than the average in Israel. Israel does not have a constitution, but freedom of religion is anchored in law. While the basic laws of Israel that serve in place of a constitution define the country as a Jewish state, these basic laws alongside Knesset statutes, Supreme Court decisions, and various aspects of Israeli common law also protect Israel's freedom of practice of religion. Israeli law officially recognizes Judaism, Christianity, Islam, Druze, and Baha'i faith. It, all, it also recognizes 10 separate sects of Christianity, the Roman, Armenian, Maronite, Greek, Syriac, and Chaldean Catholic churches, the Eastern Oriental and Syriac Orthodox churches, the Armenian Apostolic Church, the Anglicanism. Relations among religious groups, Jews and non-Jews, Muslims and Christians, different streams of Judaism, Islam and Christianity are sometimes strained Clashes mostly due to political influences or extreme elements often create tensions and problems like recently on the Temple Mount. Only a few weeks ago, there was a, a dangerous effort underway in Jerusalem. And every Ramadan, terrorist organizations try to hijack the Al-Aqsa Mosque in order to create an outbreak of violence in Jerusalem. And from there, a violent conflict across the country. This year, Hamas and Islamic Jihad extremists burst into Al-Aqsa Mosque in the early mornings, nearly each day of the month. They brought weapons into the mosque, they threw rocks at people, and used it as a base to incite violent riots. Even Israeli Arabs and their leaders, and those throughout the world, finally condemned these actions. Israel, as you know, is committed to the status quo on the Temple Mount. Muslims pray on the Temple Mount, non-Muslims visit. There is no change. There will be no change. During Ramadan, Israel ensured that hundreds of thousands of Muslims could pray at Al-Aqsa, and this despite the provocations. And indeed, as the months advanced, the Hamas managed to stage a small um, demonstration on Temple Mount where Hamas terrorists openly called for murder of Jews. That is their idea of prayer, a call for the slaughter of innocents. Luckily, their voice is diminishing. They are becoming irrelevant. The recent peace treaties with the Gulf nations joining Africa, uh, joining Egypt and Jordan and many African countries show that even the Arab world is growing tired with those who have nothing to offer but death and destruction. The only tool they have is division. 
There are so many books about how to divide nations, but not enough about how to unite. Most of them written by people who don't really get to dirty their hands. How do we bring different beliefs to know and respect one another? Interfaith engagement, challenging prejudice, and the persecutions, these are bywords. We need to engage in education, dialogue, and social action, and there is promise. Ireland has gone, gone through all of this, still is. If there's a well-performing laboratory, Ireland is it. This is a country that truly believes in social awareness and social responsibility. Ireland could contribute so much from its own experience. It could initiate projects that bring together people from different denominations to help create a strong and positive bond. Israel is an exciting and vibrant society that is abundant with creative energy and carries a true sense of family and belonging. We have our issues too. We have our extremists too, who cause problems and give Israel a bad and harmful image. They are a minority, but they cause much harm. At times of need, when Israel faces tense and difficult time, Israelis come together and work efficiently in many fields to support and be there for each other. Unfortunately, we have too many times like that. But politically, we have managed to bring together a shaky coalition of right and left wing extremists, of Jews and Arabs, who only yesterday would have sworn anathema, anathema towards one another. It's a shaky coalition, but it's there. It's working and functional. It's a miracle, admittedly, but for, all, for Israel, it's only one of many miracles. In a desert landscape, we are the only country in the world that has more trees today than it had 50 years ago, where every year half a billion mig migratory birds pass through each spring and autumn from Europe to Africa. In a land where so many have been crippled by war and terror, we have the world's only theater company comprised entirely of deaf and blind actors. In a land where I often hear the question, is it safe to travel there? Life expectancy in Israel is among the highest in the world, 82. On the other hand, as befitting the people of the book, Israel is the only country in the world that has succeeded in reviving a dead language, using it as a national language. We have the world's highest rate of university degrees per capita basis. On our bus stop mini libraries, our bus, sorry, our bus stop mini libraries with books free of charge have inspired similar initiatives in other countries. And we have more museums per capita than any other country, including the world's only museum located underwater. We have the world's oldest continuously used cemetery, of course, the Mount of Olives in Jerusalem. And if you mail a letter addressed to God, it will be automatically redirected to Israel and inserted in a crack in the Western Wall. I kid you not. Over a million notes are placed in the Western Wall each year. We are one of nine members of the International Space Club capable of launching space satellites, and the IDF is a leader in saving people trapped by natural and man-made disasters. On short notice, IDF search and rescue teams have responded to earthquakes, train wrecks, collapsed buildings, and terrorist attacks in Mexico, Kenya, India, Turkey, and the US. We operated the only, only hospital in Ukraine, managed and staffed by Israeli medical teams. So thank you for listening so patiently, and I hope the rest of your day will be fruitful and good. And forgive me for being incredibly proud of my country, even if sometimes we make mistakes, it, assign, it, is a, it is a sign that we at least are still trying. So thank you very much.